everyone, welcome or welcome back to our channel. First and foremost, let me just apologize because I have a cold and that is why I sound a little bit like a rear. But you guys, oh my gosh, you guys. I don't know if you've heard the news, but the testers now have baby pigs. So this was actually the first time, our first experience with getting to breed pigs and witness the arrival of these sweet little piglets. And I don't know if you can tell that I'm excited, but let me just tell you, I am so excited. There are a few things, however, that I have learned that I have gathered since the arrival of these little piglets. The first thing that I can tell you is that when these piglets are born, they are a lot bigger than I anticipated. For some reason, I just did not expect them to be as big as they were when they fresh came out of the womb, you know? I saw them and I was like, whoa. It made me actually feel really bad for Mama Pig that she was having to carry around all of those piglets for as long as she did because I mean, I thought my pregnancies were rough. And also speaking of that, I wasn't emotionally prepared for just how many piglets she was going to have and how many of those piglets would actually make it. Mama Pig actually delivered 11 piglets, but eight of them actually survived. Pigs apparently don't know that after they give birth to their babies, they can't roll over on top of them. So the first time that I went out to go see the pigs, I was a little traumatized. I was a little taken back because yeah, some of them didn't make it and that was really sad. We actually have another female pig here, one that we've had from the very beginning. She is Mike's absolute favorite and so we've kept her for a long time and we attempted to breed her as well. It took a long time to actually get her pregnant but she is now pregnant and expecting piglets as well. So I think with her, we will try the ferro ferro uh ferrorine. How do you say it? Oh my gosh. <laughs> the crate. I can't say it, but the crate, you know, that you put them in so that after they have birth, they don't roll over on top of their babies. I think we're gonna try that with her, so you'll have to stay tuned to see how that goes. And then the last thing that I learned, if this wasn't already obvious, is that I absolutely love these pigs. I'm kind of a sucker for cute little animals, and it's obvious, these things are super cute. And because I am such a sucker, I have already broken the golden rule, which is not to bring them in the house. Mike brought one into the house a couple of days after they were born, and at first I was like, don't you bring those pigs in my house. And then I was like, Put your head on my shoulder. Hold me in your arms, baby. But anyways, the pigs are getting bigger now. They are growing. They are getting more curious. They are straying away from mama. And in order for us to give them the absolute best quality of life possible, we want to get them transitioned out into the woods so that they can be free range pigs and they're not stuck in a little pen. So that also means that we have to get them trained to having an electric fence, which is the whole point of the video today. My husband is going to show you step by step exactly how to do that. What we're doing today is training our young pigs and mama on electric fence because I got these pastures out here and I don't want them to hit it for the first time and go blowing it out and then I have to fix it and the other pigs might escape. So what we're gonna do is run two strings of poly wire, best stuff on earth for electric fencing. TSC sells it, American Farm Works, and this will do all three of my pastures once over double wire. You got some uh, T-posts I banged down in here. If you're not familiar with T-Post, you need one of these. I call it my T-Post Whacker. Drove one down here, drove one down on the other side, same size. I'll run my poly wire across there. To complete a circuit, I'm gonna tie it in over there on the cattle fence, on that post. Wrap it to it, bring it across to the first post. Down here, come up. And across so I'll have a low one for the piglets and I have a high one for mama pig 
That way they can get used to getting buzzed. That way they can keep an eye on the fence and know when they come into the transition into the new pasture where their boundary is. So that's that. So we're gonna get started. You can get these standoffs at any kind of farmer supply or whatnot. I like to get all my stuff from TSC because it's cheap. So I like getting these short standoffs. This you want them to hit. So you need a nice short stout standoff. And I like this mason tool here, this little uh, margin trowel, because I can get around the back side of that finger there and I can pull it back around. Here, I'll, show, I'll give you a little demonstration. So I turn this, the, the nipple on the T-post facing in towards the direction I want to run the wire, because this will seat flush. So what I'll do is I'll take this here, I'll bring it down to about here, I'll stick this in, pull that around, and come on this back side and just walk it around nice and easy. I'll go one low, let me sight it real quick, and we'll go one just a little bit higher right here. Okay, let's run this other side. It's my weed whacker too. This is gonna be common sense for most everybody in life, some not. I wanna be four to six inches off the ground so the little piglet runs into it. Most important tool when you're pig farming that I found out is these right here. Linemen, a pair of linemen or uh, side cuts. Milwaukee makes a good brand. Uh, Klein makes a good brand. I like Milwaukee because it doubles as my, my pliers for my acoustical ceilings. I come from being a union contractor and I used to run ceilings all the time and these were the best I found for spinning wire and, and number 11 or number 9 wire. Which kind of doubles into raising hogs is you got to have 11 gauge wire galvanized always around your farm I mean you use it for everything it holds up in the weather and you can twist tie everything off because pigs like to damage things all right so that's how I'm gonna run this first one I'm gonna start out here tie this up put a little knot in it and then run it like this down through here. The way I make my connection is I tie a knot in the line here, right on the existing line. And then I'll tie this over and around to hit both sides of the knot on this line. And then I'll just Place right into it and it's good to go. The bottom line is good and now we'll just go ahead and tie my top line in and we'll be all set. This is just to get them used to a electric shock. So I did it here because this is the loading and unloading portion of my pen. I made this all out of gate so I can remove whatever side I want and let it open at any given point. This side, I did it because they got a little waller spot right here where I've seen mama recently and I've seen the pigs cross here quite a bit. I run that low one there and then we'll see what happens, but uh, they should run into it. Come on. Come on. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. And that's how we get shocked. That's how we get used to it. 
For those of you who are animal lovers and maybe a little bit sensitive to this, I totally get it because I was too, but I assure you that the shock is not severely painful. Mike has actually been shocked on it a few times himself. It's just enough to alert them that they've reached a boundary and this fencing is really helpful to keeping any predators out as well. Well, if you guys like my little demonstration on how to set up for uh, electrical pen, subscribe and, and like the channel. And uh, if you guys have had trouble, like I have, unloading and loading pigs, my next video will explain on the best way i found to make a shoot. That way you guys can load in and out without any issues, turnarounds, or any pigs getting hurt. So, all right, thanks guys. See you next time.